we completed bourgeois democratic revolution in our own way, but our main objective is socialism. So we have to go forward towards socialism. So to prepare the basis of socialism and march forward to the objective of socialism, we had to unite and form a revolutionary and strong communist party which would which will, would lead the next historical tax of the revolution, that is the socialist Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today, we are joined by Narayan Kadi Shreshta, a secretariat member of the Nepal Communist Party and a spokesperson of the party. He is also a former Deputy Prime Minister of Nepal. Thank you for joining us. So, the last one and a half years have been very important as far as Nepal is concerned. So, in the first, we saw a communist government coming to power with a historic two-thirds majority. And then last year, the two biggest parties in Nepal united to form the Nepal Communist Party. And since then, there has been a long and extensive reunification process. So, one year after this process, how do you evaluate it and what do you see as the lessons and the big challenges ahead? In Nepal, we communists, the working class of Nepal, led and completed the anti-feudal democratic revolution. Previously, Nepal's Burja Force political party, mainly Nepali Congress, was the leader of the anti-feudal struggle. But because of its limitation and its class character, it could not have completed the Buddha Democratic Revolution to the end. In 1949, our party was established. Since then, our party formulated People's Democratic Revolution as its strategy. And it tried to coordinate all forms of struggle, but basically it was people's movement in the earlier stage, but later on uh, there was armed struggle also, and particularly in 1996 there was a very big armed struggle led by CPN Maoist at that time. It was popularly known as People's War. It, uh, went for 10 years and on the other hand the peaceful political movement was led by CPN UML. Its uh, main ideological architect was Comrade Madan Bhandari and under the ideological leadership of Comrade Madan Bhandari, CPN UML led the people's movement and the Nepal's bourgeois forces even could not, could not lead even the bourgeois democratic struggle to, the, to its final conclusion. So the, we communists from different fronts led the Bourgeois Democratic Revolution and finally we completed it in 2006. And uh, it was very unique. The path of revolution, Bourgeois Democratic Revolution in Nepal was very unique. It was the com com combination and coordination of people's war, armed struggle and the people's movement. It entered into the peace process after armed struggle and uh, we had the Constitutional Assembly election. Constitutional Assembly itself declared Nepal a uh, republic, republican state, and then Constitutional Assembly promulgated the new constitution. That Constitutional Assembly uh, declared Nepal a federal democratic republic, but not only that, it also defined Nepal as a socialism-oriented inclusive democracy. So that was a very big achievement. So, the path of revolution was its original and unique. Not only that, the character of or the model of democracy was also unique. It was not the traditional parliamentary system, but it was not at the power of the new democratic revolution as what was completed in China or people's democracy in Vietnam or in Cuba or Korea in other countries. Anyway, by our own original and unique path of revolution, we completed the anti-feudal bourgeois democratic revolution, basically. 
and it was a new model of democracy and it is socialism oriented inclusive democracy as it is provisioned and institutionalized in the constitution so now when we promulgate the constitution so from the struggle from the street from the struggle armed struggle people's movement constituent assembly we all led i mean we the working class in nepal with the left forces communist forces led the whole process but after the promulgation of the constitution there was a big challenge before us so we had to implement the constitution and the question came who will lead the process of implementation of the new constitution we the we the communist forces led forces led the revolutionary struggle and achieved the big democratic change uh, ending the era of feudalism and introducing the era of uh, new democratic uh, political system but if we could not be united then the leadership of implementing the new constitution i mean expanding the political change to the socio economic sphere would have been under the leaders of bourgeois forces and which would be very much absurd and under that leadership it would not have gone to the expected direction that is why we took the decision to unite we two parties the then two parties cpn uml and the cpn mao center took the decision to unite with the two objectives one the immediate objective of socio economic transformation that is prosperity prosperity with social justice so we third that if only the political change is there and it is not expanded to socio economic sphere if you cannot deliver to the people what exactly they got from the big political movement in which they, they themselves participated then the question would arise among the people that what is the rationality rational of the political change so if we cannot get anything in our lap in practice to change the our daily life so we had to lead the implementation process of the new constitution delivering to the people giving prosperity and the solution of their daily lives so for that cause we had to unite one thing so the immediate tactical objective was prosperity with social justice delivery to the people the secondly we completed bourgeois democratic revolution in our own way but our main objective is socialism so we have to go forward towards socialism so to prepare the basis of socialism and march forward to the objective of socialism we had to unite and form a revolutionary and strong communist party which would which will would lead the next historical task of the revolution that is the socialist revolution so for that two objectives we decided to unite the party and thus we formed nepal communist party ncp so this is a big decision historical decision and that has already paid to the people and the communist movement and because of our decision that we are going to unite the people gave the mandate to the communist forces as a result we have the near two third majority in the federal parliament majority in six out of the seven provincial assemblies and in majority of the local governments so after the election after the mandate of the people we got united and it is very clear that people's mandate in the election was not only for the election it was the 
adoption of our policy of unity. So we decided to unite later on. And now we have, as I said, NCP, Nepal Communist Party, the United Party, the, the party which is in, now in the government, uh, in the federal government, provincial government, and the local government. Yes, this is our big achievement. But uh, we have serious challenges before us also. On the one hand, there is big opportunity and possibility with us, realizing our immediate tax of prosperous Nepali and happy Nepali, preparing the basis of socialism. We can go towards socialism. That is the main prospect of the Nepalese communist movement and the Nepalese revolutionary process. But on the same time, at the same time, we have serious challenges also. Because one thing is that Of course, we complete, completed anti-feudal Buddha democratic revolution, basically. Now we are in the government, the second point. But state power is not totally revolutionized. All state organs are not revolutionized, as it was done in previously uh, revolutionary democratic, where the countries where the revolutionary democratic dictatorship or the socialism was established. The state power was at once seized by the revolutionaries. But here, our path of revolution was unique. So we have government, one major component of the state power in our hand. Other state organs are not totally revolutionized. We are trying to change the whole state organs, but uh, till the moment we cannot say that it is totally revolutionized, totally transformed. So it is still in the period of transition. Though political, historical political transition is mainly over, from Marxist perspective, from revolutionary perspective, we have to be very clear that our state organs are not totally revolutionized yet. And with the leadership of the society, with the leadership of the main state organ, government, we are trying to revolutionize the whole state machinery, and this is still in the state of transition. So that is our main challenge. That is not easy for us to um, translate our policies and programs in practice, because there is always resistance from the different uh, sections of the state. So one thing. The second thing is that, you know, international situation, the imperialism is still dominating today. And imperialist forces will not only limit themselves and are not only limited de limiting themselves as the spectator. Let the Nepalese people do what they can do or what they will do. That is not their approach and that cannot be true. So they are silently trying to weaken the, our journey from the from their point of view, as they can do. So they are trying to create confusion within the communist movement itself. They are trying to influence our policies and programs by their instrument as World Bank, IMF, and other things. They are also trying to influence our government, our party machineries, uh, with the induction of the concept that if you want development, you'll have to have the aid, grants, and cooperation from, from us. So if you do want that development, 
you have to be very careful not to go towards your goal. The second thing is the old reaction that is trying to influence here. The movement that has led the Nepal revolutionary, uh, Nepal's revolutionary process, Nepal's transformative pro process, which has been the example for the whole communist movement, whole working class movement in the world, whole progressive movement in the world. So they want to fail it. So that is the biggest challenge that we are having. Third thing is that I think is the main challenge that is within us. One is ideological degeneration. Threat of ideological degeneration is there. Because you, have, you are in the government, you are the biggest party, not only simple majority you have, you have two-third majority. So, there is what we feel is the deterioration in the ideological sector. Not caring of ideological theoretical issues, the tendency of going towards pragmatism. So, we came to this point of success because we fought against dogmatism. Not only that, we fought against pragmatism and right revisionism. That led to the big success of the communist movement and the Nepal's revolutionary process, revolutionary movement. But after we led the Buddha Democratic Revolution, after we are mandated by the people to run the government and we are in the government, so what we are now facing the big challenge is within us, that is the deterioration and degeneration in the ideological space. The second is the cultural degeneration. Is the self-centrism, individualism, bourgeois individualism has been a strong force within the party and the movement. So the ideological cultural problem so is the main problem of our party and the communist movement today. Though, as I said, we have two objectives, one immediate tactical objective, one strategic objective. The strategic objective is socialism and tactical objective is prosperity, uh, mainly prosperity of the working class, laboring masses, but ideological cultural clarity, ideological clarity and cultural transformation is the main issue that we, we should focus on. So these are the challenges, but still we are very much hopeful that we can go forward taking this opportunity for the people of Nepal, for the working class of Nepal, and also it can be important to the whole revolution movement of the world and the working class movement of the world. Thank you, Comrade Sambat. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch.